It's called red carpet ready. Yay! After a three year, yes, three year hiatus, I am back on the red carpet. My first endeavor is with filmmaker Nicole Williams, me, Paul Williams. She's out of Houston, Texas, and the name of her film is 365 Days in LA. 365 Days in LA. And you will hear from her, and you will see her on the red carpet. We saw the film today. The film is just heartwarming. It's just it's so just, I think it's revolutionary. We are doing it, you guys. Black women, we are so overlooked in this industry that we, ha we just have to get up and do things ourselves, you know. It's like that song by Aretha Franklin. Sisters are doing it for themselves. You gotta Google that song. But let's just go on about this film 365 days in la if you hear about it go see it go see it this is an independent film indie indie rules i think i i mean in this case in this scenario it does she has decided to do her own thing produce direct write, just all of that it's it's wonderful. I am so on board with this. And please be on board with Red Carpet Ready. Please hit that subscribe button and watch me roll, roll into other red carpets in the Los Angeles area. We were in Hollywood today at the Hudson Theater and we saw this private screening of this new film by a Black woman filmmaker named Miko Williams. You gotta be on board with that. And it's Juneteenth? What? This is great. This is great. So please hit that subscribe button so you can see other new shows that I have. I have a lot of great stuff that's coming up. I'm so fortunate. Ramel Carter Media is trying to come up, is coming up. We're not trying, we're doing it. That's what we have to do these days, just do it. This is that post-COVID time. Well, we're still in the COVID era. Let's just do what we need to do. So my new show is called Red Carpet Ready. We are gonna be on different red carpets here in the Los Angeles area. We might go to other places too. Let's just see what's gonna happen. All right, I'm excited. I'm excited, I'm excited. So again, hit that subscribe button. Subscribe to my channel. And watch out for Red Carpet Ready. It's coming. It's coming. It's here. It's here. And we have more with Nicole Williams. She's a writer. She's a director, producer, all that great stuff. We are doing it, guys. All women, especially Black women. Yes, let's go out and support us. Support all women, but, you know, just support us. Support us with, with what we do, because we're doing it for you. Stay tuned to more Red Carpet Ready.
introduce yourself. Any particular show or? Awesome. Well, hello, good morning. We are live with Miko Williams, who has a red carpet event on Saturday. I can't wait to be a part of it. Thank you so much, Miko, for allowing me to be a part of your new project. And so what we're going to do this morning is get to know Nicole. Hello. Hi, good morning, Ramel, and thanks for having me. All right, tell us about your filmmaking journey. Okay, well, my filmmaking journey started pretty early in life. I would say maybe high school, I was bit by the bug. I wanted to be like the female Spike Lee. And um, I knew I just probably wasn't going to film school <laughs> with the parents that I had. So um, what I did, we compromised a bit. I studied mass communications, focused on journalism, trained that way. And then in my, even in my little off time that I would have, I would still kind of be doing some things creatively and more scripted than unscripted. And so it's always been that battle of you know, trying to kind of see those dreams through, I guess. Um, and then in college, there was a course that allowed for us to write you know, in that way. And that was really helpful for me. Um, I, I got a lot of um, classmates involved, mass communications classmates, along with theater classmates involved on the campus of Prairie View a and University. And I did like two, um, two to three short film, con or really proof of concepts. Uh, they never really saw the light of day, but I was able to walk away with probably two trailers that never really, you know, in the land of unscripted world, it didn't really equate to anything. People were like, oh, no, this is not, you know, news and that kind of thing, even though that okay. was right. I had, you know, everything was done more so for news leading up to that. So when I was an adult and after graduation and even after teaching for maybe a year or so, um, I just could not let this thing go. And so I was going to do one short film because that's the most reasonable thing to do. I was going to film it in my house. I had written a book. So I had adapted that book into um, just one short. It was based on one um, of my characters. I had seven who represented the seven deadly sins and each of them had their own cautionary tale. And so I let um, one character in particular be my focal point, but I never met anybody who really, you know, I had, you know, done this casting um, aspect and met so many amazing people and they were really, um, you know, just loving the project. They were like, well, if you do anything else, please let me know, keep me in touch with everything. And I was just thinking, I was like, I cannot find anybody to play this part, but I, in my head, could see them playing the other characters and the other characters and all of that. So with it being seven women, I kind of, you know, just looked out and was able to find the six women, but just couldn't find the, <laughs> the one. So it was just always something kind of like that. And what happened in that regard, that was the launch of my official indie filmmaking career. So I went from trying to make one short film, but everybody was so encouraging. Okay. But you know, when you get encouragement, you can't turn that down because it's kind of rare sometimes. And mm -hmm. um, instead of making one, I actually made seven. I did eventually find the um the lady who would play the beginning role or the nucleus of the group but just to find all of those characters in in the actors in the local community of houston i just couldn't pass that up so um in 2010 i launched um, all seven shorts they played out as a feature at landmark river oaks theater in houston texas which is no longer here during the pandemic it um got phased out and it was a wonderful, wonderful um, launch to a career. Wonderful. So you started mass communications. I myself started journalism, and it's 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 challenging as an African American, a black woman, trying mm -hmm. to do independent, oh. trying to be independent. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. So after. Um, Writing the book in 2009, I was a self-published author. I learned a lot of uh, ins and outs of the publishing business. 
Um, I made a lot of mistakes, but then I also learned from those mistakes. Francis, I'm interviewing right now. Shush, shush. <laughs> that's my um that's cool that's cool <laughs> pets are allowed yes <laughs> I it out for a little bit but he was like doing some other stuff so i'll get to you in a second be good please and so um back to 2009 <laughs> he's like can you hear him <laughs> a little really a little. Oh my but it's fine okay it's fine we're good um that was just the start and 2010 was when we did the uh filming of the of the actual series tangled web of true love tales so with that short film series being independent really kind of set me up for what would be later on what i'm doing now and just throughout i published after that uh i published two more books i published um a fiction novel that you know was a continuation of tangled web of true love tales it was called Toxic Ties Trilogy. And then as a teacher, which I've been for 13 years plus, um, I've always been kind of able to, you know, during the summer and during the breaks, be independent in my creative world. And so what I was finding myself doing was, of course, putting all of more effort into teaching, but squeezing in time to be, you know, able to do some things locally and then bring some people in that are creatives in that um in that um subculture there so um the last book that i published um self-published was uh miss lit for life lessons which was pretty much my um paying homage to the teaching profession sharing with another teacher an english teacher specifically or people who had some type of aspect of that in their class um, i put all of the lessons i felt were really effective with my kids and then I also talked about some of the lessons I had to learn as a teacher, hoping that, you know, whoever is reading that book is not having it as hard, especially those first couple of years. Mm -hmm. So um, that was kind of, um, you know, a constant. I'm always writing, period. But it may come out in different forms independently. So books have been 70% of the time and then the remaining time has been you know, some type of film, short film, either on my end, or maybe I'm writing for somebody else. Um, the first time I had gone to LA was off of um, the first film that I had done. It was a competition that um, picked women from across the world uh, to females, women, female women filmmakers, actually, from all over. Um, out of 500 people, they picked about 20 of us to come together and work with women who had been, um, uh, abuse survivors. So during that month of domestic abuse awareness, we filmed certain survivors in different teams and it was called the Mary Kay Inspiring Stories. Um, and then I was a part of a group that, call, that was called Give, Teen Give Joy. And there were two other groups. And what we did was in Los Angeles, we uh, interviewed these women and we created short films. We had celebrity narrators to speak not only in English, but also in Spanish to cover the grounds of some of the people who were also international as well as watching that way. And that was kind of like the first feel that I had of like merging both those worlds together, loving journalism and interviewing people and knowing that technical side, but at the same time, being able to cinematically showcase something more artistic and more heartfelt and more uh, particular and not as um, you know how it changes up so much with uh, news. So it was a project that we were connected to and we still, some of us still keep in contact with each other and root each other on. So that was um, also another independent feel. We kind of served as a team together, but we each stood, you know, in our own lane as filmmakers. Okay, that is awesome, wonderful. It's great that you said you work with women of domestic abuse. I just received my certification in domestic violence counseling. Oh, so wonderful. that has been part of my journey too oh, as a wow. yes, as a domestic violence survivor. Oh, I'm so and, happy about that. And I hate yes. that it happened, of course, right? Yes. I'm glad that you're able to, you know, live to tell because not oh, of course. It. Yes, yes. And so I'm happy about that. But let's get to the Saturday event that's coming up. 
your film 365 days is that correct mm -hmm. 365 days in LA in LA so let's hear about that uh, so it is a midday movie I'm, I'm a big fan of matinees and so um we're gonna really be celebrating just you know similar to the end of any journey um making that one year was really being here from Houston to Hollywood um being here for a year to some people may not be a lot but if you were only you know thinking about coming for maybe three months and seeing what would happen a year is a long time and so I wanted to commemorate this time and never forget uh what that journey was like it is a, a journey that highlights uh what an actor not an actor but what a writer is going through and so my thing was I wanted to have the red carpet experience at the beginning. I wanted to also um, let those who are interested in seeing what that life is like behind the scenes, because uh, many people come for different things to, to LA and especially for Hollywood. A lot of dreamers come here. Yes. But I yes. wanted to focus yes. on like, what do people do in between when you're waiting for your big break? A lot of times I've only known people to come specifically for acting and, it's, it's, and especially here most people for some reason think I'm an actor and um they're always kind of shocked to hear I want to be behind the scenes I want to work you know more so in that lane of of course writing of course directing and of course producing but specifically writing that's what I came out here for and so um it's a candid look but also an intentional look behind the scenes so the, um, the different attendees get to be a, a special guest because really um, it's a private screening. So I invited a lot of different people who I had met along the way here, um, okay. whether they're in the industry or not. I wanted to get that experience in front of them first before anyone else. So it's just a really special feeling to be able to do that. And then after the screening, have a Q&A and then um, be able to answer not only the moderator's questions, but also the audience's questions and whatever they feel after they've watched that. And so after that, we're going to, you know, do a little bit of networking and red carpet pictures still and some interviews and things of that nature will take place. And then it's one for the books after that, you know, the rest is going to be history. So cannot wait for that very excited thank you again for the invite thank and you. look forward to much more red carpet you. events yes. with you and because i know you probably have other projects in the works can you tell us a little bit about that or yes the ones i can talk about it's interesting this uh particular project was not on my radar until kind of getting closer to the anniversary or what some people call a LA anniversary or something like that I've heard. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and so the two other projects, one is also a short film. It is a scripted project um, that was connected to an earlier uh, thesis that I had written for my MFA in screenwriting. And okay. all of this kind of happened during the pandemic. I was really trying to do that one first, but there were some stipulations with um, trying to figure out what what actors to um, utilize for that for that vision. And then the location, I actually had that, but it's in Texas. So it was just kind of like a waiting game with that one. So we've um, put a pin in it, but we're going to come back to it because it, it's really um, something that I wanted to do as soon as possible, but, you know, things are always in God's timing. And then yeah. another project is uh, centered around some IP and it's unscripted. So I actually have to be a little more delicate with this situation as well, because it's not something I've written um, from my own creativity. It's more so uh, based on a true life story. And it is a very tragic one, but there's a glimmer okay. of hope with the retrial attached to it. But with it being a retrial attached to it, um, we have to be very sensitive as, you know, filmmakers and documentarians to not uh, do anything that could affect the outcome of uh, such a tragic event and, and them also 
trying to find justice along the way. So it's pretty much like a modern day Emmett Till um, story. And in this one that um, I've been kind of start stopping with along the way, because it is still very much an emotional uh, situation that the family is living through and trying to survive through and, and that kind of thing. So that's something I definitely want to uh, bring their story to um, more eyes and, and bring it not necessarily to life because it is already, you know, done, but it is still um, not quite finished yet. So I have to be mindful of that as a person capturing them. So we're, we're given that, that time that is needed. And aside from that, um, I'm also working on a book, a new book. So I'll have more details about that after the screening and things of that nature. Oh, that'll be great. Can't wait to hear about that. Can't wait to hear about other things that you're doing. And one last thing, um, of course, because I'd like to to get more into filmmaking and, and television, all of that. How did you get the funds? Where Where does the funding come from? And, you know, I think that's the age-old question and the question of the day. It yes. is you know, yes. so the important. Most important, so important. The most important question. And it's always a finesse to it. It's always a changing uh, answer for many people. But my thing is, I, from the start, knew that this was a project that I could self-fund. And then along the way, um, add to it and get the funding that is needed to execute like a longer form of this documentary. So with it being a mini doc, it originally was 10 minutes, it's now 30, 30 minutes. And um, I have so much footage. And um, what I want to do is enter it into festivals to uh, partner with those types of um, markets, even a yes. fair market. Yes. And then also I'm open to investors. I'm open to um, angel investors as well as those who will be, you know, aligned with the project from here on out. I'm also looking to um, get more acclimated with what, I know some aspects of what it would take to, you know, get it on a streaming market and things of that nature. But at the moment, we're still dealing with the heart of it right now and getting it in front of, you know, some very, very mindful people and then you know from then on building up the funding that is necessary in order to not if only do this project full out in the sense of not just like a part one but also do a part two three or four or allow it to be a full documentary but i have so much more footage that i'd rather do it in in um episodes i'm really more um aligned with that idea similar to what we saw on Netflix, um, okay. Kanye West, um, okay. his documentary was, um, you know, was able to be uh, split up into those types of chapters. Same thing with uh, Magic Johnson's on Apple Plus, you know, he was able to do it in different chapters. Right. Now, um, the funding, I believe, you know, everybody has their own way of whether they're doing it to begin with, a lot of people encourage me like, hey, don't use your own money. But when God tells you to do something, sometimes uh, yes. you have to kind of move with the spirit. It's a it's something yes. going on where I needed to do this now in this season before the season was over with. And so I was just being obedient and I kept, uh, I'm really good with money in the sense of keeping things under cost, but making sure that we're resourceful and stretching it out as much as we can to not let it look like a low budget film, but it actually is one where I was able to stay under. And I'm very proud of that because that's where you can kind of build on top of it with whatever God wants to do. And also with, um, you know, just different networking situations. So I always say, go with God, go you know, with God, go right. with God. That's yeah. the best option. Yeah. It's a struggle for women in this industry, and okay. I'm so glad. I'm so glad that you are doing what you needed to do, Thank and you. can't wait to see the project. How, when will it? Is it going to be in theaters? How are people going to see it? See How it? are people going to see it? So right now, as far as this uh, Saturday, this will be the premiere. 
And so it will be in a theater, a select theater, and it will continue to be like that throughout. So I right now uh, can't share details on the next screening okay. and like when that will be and things of that nature, but I wanna keep it very intimate in that space. But at the same time through film festivals, it can definitely be seen there. And then um, I will definitely be also going to, back to Houston so it can have a, a similar experience that I'm having in Hollywood, I would like to have that in my hometown. So um, it's really a project that's gonna get in 2022, uh, it's gonna cover some ground. So I'm really excited about it being screened and independently specifically, but also it has some potential to also cover some other ground outside of what I've always done. Okay, well, in this case, Houston does not have a problem. <laughs> he does have the wonderful Nicole Williams. Thank oh, you thanks. so much for being with me today. And, and thank you so much for having me. This as is always, so as always anytime, anytime, let me know of any new projects you have going on. So in closing, in closing, because she's got work to do, I've got work to do. <laughs> and then we got a cat screaming left and right. Yes. Um, red carpet <laughs> ready is my thank you. <laughs> or some type of, you know, it's something where it's linked to this film one way or another. So I wanted to leave you with that. I know what times we are living in, so I didn't want you to have to touch anything <laughs> too, too much, but that's my gift to you. And then another thing that would be very helpful, y'all did an amazing job with uh, improvising for me and with me, but I want to make sure that I also have ways that I can